What you're going to see from this Battle Hawk defense is a little different than what you've seen before. The Panthers are going to have to go to more of a drop back pass game. The one thing that EJ Perry struggled with early, the shift came when they shifted the style of play. They stopped with the drop back pass, they put him into those RPO situations, and he was able to have great success. Now, that's not an here. Just because you have so long to go, and you have to make sure you put your kicker in a comfortable position, because like you said, he hasn't attempted a field goal since high school. We asked Mike Nolan before the game, how, how long has he been kicking in camp? He said, well, I've seen him kick without a rush from 65. And they said, not that I'm going to kick him from 65 yeah. in a game. My guess is you want at least 40 or under to feel like you've got a legit shot. I watched him warm up. He was hitting from 55. But again, no rush in warm-ups. Yeah. First and 10 at the 35. Four-man rush, swing, and Colbert with a nice one-handed catch. And more importantly, makes the catch and goes out of bounds. Minimal time off the clock, 41 seconds to go. Yeah, not having any timeouts is so important right now. You have to get these throws outside the numbers. But remember, the clock will stop momentarily when you get first down, similar to the college game. Second and six. Four-man pressure. Perry on the run. He'll throw this one away. Carson Wells provided that heat on E.J. Perry. Wisely threw it out of bounds. Brings up third and six. Now the clock stoppage rules are, are the same in, in any level. If the ball is incomplete or out of bounds, the clock will remain stopped. So you can huddle. You can call a good play. You don't have to go in a hurry-up situation. Remember, no timeouts left for Mike Nolan's Panthers. Yeah, remember the issue that A.J. Perry had early in the game in the drop back passes, staring down his target. So he has to make sure he uses his eyes to move those safeties to get to the throw that he wants. Looks like they're going to go two-man, which I think would be a mistake. Four-man pressure. Perry in some trouble, spins away. By in time, sees Colburn open, plucks it off the turf. No, incomplete. Incomplete at the 41-yard line. Colburn tried to sell it. He couldn't convince the Stripes that it was a catch. And with 27 seconds to go, it's fourth down. Yeah, clearly hits the ground, bounces up. Nice acting job by Colburn there, but he's not able to get his hand underneath that throw. Well, when you have the tire remnants that spray out of the turf, so much it's tire. a little bit more difficult to sell. Yeah. First fourth down of the day. Fourth down and six. Got man to man coverage. A wobbler, but it's caught. First down, Michigan. Got to hurry. No timeouts. The clock will be stopped. Pause while they set the chains. Yep. 20 seconds to go. They wind the clock, and Perry will spike it. Second down for the Panthers. Wait, wait, wait. It's Perry. It's Perry showing some guts. Right, because, you know, a, a lot of times when you're a quarterback and you start the game the way he did, just not finding any success, even when you do well, it bounces off the ground and, and into the hands of a defensive back. It's a nice job throwing a nice curl route and a very, very nice route by the wide receiver to snap down that route and make sure he gets back to the quarterback, John Hightower, a guy who they got from D.C. when D.C. released him earlier in the offseason. Second and 10 at the 46. 18 seconds remaining. Perry. The pressure coming to the sideline. Jump ball too tall for Jordan Sewell. Cameron Kelly out there on the coverage. 13 seconds to go. Third down and 10. Michigan down one. At this point, you have to for sure notice you have a first down if you throw the ball in the middle of the field, or it has to be thrown to the sideline. The, the option of E.J. Perry taking off and running, it's probably not there. So if I'm the Battlehawks, I will go back to that two-man, right, where you have two safeties high and man-to-man -man coverage, allowing the wide receivers to only break out to make sure that you force E.J. Perry into a running situation. Third and ten at the 46. They are going to five-man rush. Perry throws, looking for Colburn. That pressure got to Perry a little bit, Devin, and now fourth down. Yeah, so he didn't play two-man, but they played cover two. And they're bringing Jake Bates on wow. to try a game-winning field goal. <laughs> Never attempted a field goal 
at Texas State. Moved to Arkansas, was a kickoff specialist. Played soccer at Central Arkansas. This is a 64-yard try. His first kick since high school. Longer Talk kick. about diving into the deep end of the pool. Longer kicks, lower trajectory. He's got to get this ball up so it's not blocked. And a timeout. They'll kick oh anyway. Goodness. And that would have been good. That pretty way. That would have Pretty been good. good, but the Battle Hawks called timeout. The one detail that you have to remember, how high was it? Because if that ball comes out really low, you've got tall defenders that are going to reach up and get hands on it. Take a look at this leg. Ooh, that would have been high enough, Kevin. Mike Nolan told us he's got a huge leg. It's one of the reasons they brought him in because you kick off from the 20. The question with field goals is, of course, accuracy. Yeah. Can you yeah. aim the leg where you want it to go? He did there. Remember he told us, he said, yeah, I saw him make it, but it was on high school field goal posts. Right. But it was right down the middle when he saw him. So, right down the middle there, too. Oh, my goodness. And, and I think, like I said, I think that it's going to be high enough that it will not be blocked. They've been have, they're going to have to get a lot of pressure inside. 64-yard try for the lead. Good snap, good hold, line drive, kick, and it is good! A star is born in the UFL. Jake Bates, 64. Yards! Clutch for the Panthers. I mean, the snap, the hold, and the booming kick is perfect. I think you said it perfectly. A star is born. Mike Nolan said, I don't think I'd try him from 65. He tried him from 64. <laughs> and with three seconds left, it's good enough for the lead. Kevin, it might have been good from close to 70. I think he's got more. Wow. So much for icing Jake Bates. That didn't work. I, I think it gave him a little confidence. Who needs to kick field goals in college? Enjoy your college years. Have Play fun, some soccer. You know? And then go pro and kick a 64-yard potential game winner. That is remarkable. And then back out for the kickoff duties. I mean, it's not like he missed his field goals in college. He never attempted one. Never. At any point in his college career. And he graduated high school in 2017. To put that in perspective, what if E.J. Parrott only played high school quarterback? Correct. And then came out here and did what he was able to do today. Wow. Jake Bates. Let's see. Heart rate about 200 right now for Bates. The squid kick bounding along. Picked up at the 30 yard line. Shepard looking for running room. Shepard, the clock is at zero. And the Michigan Panthers rip the victory from the jaws of defeat. Thanks to a 64 yard field goal from Jake Bates.